Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's session. We're going to go ahead and get started in just a couple of minutes. Um, but before we do that, uh, if you're online and if you have a moment, just drop a quick note in chat to let us know where you're calling in from today. Wow, it's, it's so great to see wh the, where folks are calling in from. There's quite a, a span, Massachusetts, Kansas City, Missouri, Chicago, um, Wisconsin, Oregon, um, Detroit, um, Charlotte, uh, another Chicago. Um, oh, and great, Vancouver, Tennessee, Albuquerque, Romania, uh, and another British Columbia. So welcome. Again, we're going to get started in just a minute or two. And the hello to California. <laughs> Looks like that's about it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you, everybody, and welcome to today's session on digital marketing for nonprofits with Hootsuite. Uh, we are delighted to uh, have uh, Roya Kalbasi join us today from Hootsuite. Um, but before we get started with the specifics of the presentation, um, we have a couple of quick housekeeping items to take care of. Um, first, if you have questions during the session, please drop them in the Q&A um, section of Zoom at the bottom. We've all been doing Zoom, I think, for a while now. But if you can't, it's the Q&A button at the bottom. Uh, we will have time uh, for questions at the end of the session, and we encourage you to ask those questions. Keep keep coming in. Happy to have a conversation at the end of the formal presentation. Um, also, don't forget to check your email after the event. We will be sending links and a recording and any additional resources that come up today um, in a follow-up email in a day or so after the session. Um, also, if you learned something incredibly cool today or something you want to share, please do not hesitate to give us a shout out on social media. Uh, if you can, uh, please use the hashtag TSWebinar. Um, and then lastly, uh, just a quick reminder that closed captioning is available today. Um, definitely feel free to switch that on if uh, you find that useful. Um, thank you. Those are the housekeeping tips for today. Um, and also, before we get into the details of today's session, we wanted to uh, welcome you to TechSoup's Global Network, um, especially for those of you um, who are new here. At TechSoup, we believe very strongly in the power of technology to do good and to help nonprofits and other social benefit organizations um, move forward with their important community impact missions. Um, and we're hoping that this conversation today will help demonstrate a part of how that's made possible. So um, moving on to uh, the details of today's session, our guest speaker today is Roya Kalbasi. And thank you so much, Roya, for being with us today. Um, it's great to have you. Uh, Roya is a passionate customer success manager dedicated to driving organizational success through strategic social media planning. She has a wealth of experience as a trusted advisor, with a commitment to ensuring customer satisfaction and fostering business growth. Royal, Roya helps organizations plan, implement, and execute their social media strategies and helps ensure that those strategies align seamlessly with overall goals and objectives. Um, Roya's approach is grounded in a deep understanding of diverse social media platforms and a keen awareness of emerging trends in the digital landscape. And without further ado, let me go ahead and pass the presentation over to Roya. Take it away. Thanks, Roya. Awesome. Thanks, Katrine. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hootsuite and Texas webinar. Thanks so much for participating today, and I hope we all have a great time together and can uh, learn something new that's going to help us with our social media strategy going forward. Uh, so as Katrine mentioned, my name is Roya Kalbasi, and I'm a senior customer success manager I have been with Hootsuite for uh, almost four years now, and my main focus has been helping our customers um, become successful and achieve their goals uh, when it comes to social media marketing. Um, today also with me, I have my amazing colleague, Laura Reichlich. She'll be also helping me throughout the session. 
So feel free to uh, use the Q&A function um, in the Zoom and drop your questions throughout the session. And also we'll leave some time at the end to go over your questions. If there's uh, anybody who wants to come off mute and ask your questions so that others can also benefit from it, uh, we will leave some time uh, towards the end uh, of today's session. All right, so let's get started with going through our agenda today. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, going over how to conduct a high level audit uh, for your social media um, pages. So we're going to start with that just because this is a key uh, step towards um, making sure that what you're working today is working towards your goals and helping you become successful. So once uh, we are we have done with our audits. The next step would be to plan ahead. So ma making sure that based on the what we have learned from the audit, our past experience, we are planning for the future. So there are some best practices and tips and tricks that we're gonna share around that. Then we'll be going over social media social media listening strategies. So whether you're doing it right now or whether this is something you're considering, we'll go over some basics and some best practices when it comes to social media uh, listening. And then uh, as a wrap up for the session, we'll go over some best practices and tips and tricks when it comes to um, all the practices you're doing towards your social media goals. Uh, these are very uh, like um, high level. We're going to touch on a few things in terms of best practices. Um, so again, um, we'll go over that as the final um, section before we wrap up and uh, leave some time for the Q&A at the end. So as for the next, uh, for the first step, let's go over uh, conducting an audit. So on the next slide, we're going to first start with understanding why we should be doing a social media audit and how often we should be doing it. Um, based on the experience uh, working with nonprofit organizations, we have learned that one of the biggest challenges for these organizations is um, understanding if uh, what you're doing is working for them and what's working best so they can figure out how to use their limited resources uh, to be more effective. So feel free to drop in the chat if this is a challenge for your team and for your organization as well. But in order to understand what's working and what's not and what you need to change in terms of your social media strategy, the first step is to do an audit. This could be a, a quarterly audit. This could be an audit after you have, ran, you have run a big campaign or it could be just a yearly activity that you do to look at your uh, past year, see what's, uh, what's worked best uh, and what you need to change and what are the gaps. So as we know, um, there are a lot of metrics that you can track towards uh, understanding your activities and their impact on social. So it could be overwhelming. So it's really important that you focus on what's important for your organization. Uh, so first of all, we want to focus on uh, our social media channels. So the platforms that are using, the platforms that we have presence on, and our prof profiles. We want to distinguish and we want to identify what's the best platform that's giving us the best result that we're looking for. So it's really important to track and audit your platforms um, um, every often to make sure that you are reaching the right audience and understand where your audience are uh, to better um, st uh, strategically reach out to them, uh, you want to you want to understand what is uh, what your audience wants to see. So, what are the top performing activities in terms of engagement? So, where what are the things that your audience are typically engaging with more often? Which means that those are the things they're looking for. Um, so, you want to and the next is uh, you want to understand who your audiences are. So you can tailor your strategy according, uh, accordingly to make sure that what you are doing is effective and impactful. Doing an audit also help you understand uh, how each platform is contributing to your goals. So one platform can be helping you um, 
uh, getting more uh, visibility, creating more brand awareness. Other platform could be helping you generating more leads. So you want to understand all of that. So you can, again, tailor your content strategy and your social media strategy accordingly. And then finally, knowing all this information is going to help you generate new ideas, identify the gaps, see what you're doing that's working according to your goals. Make sure that you continue doing that. So these are the main reasons why you want to do um, you you want to do an audit on a, a regular basis. Again, this could be quarterly, this could be yearly. According to the amount of activities you have and the resources that you have, you want to make sure that you just do it on a regular basis and always compare it to the previous audit result that you have done in the past. On the next slide, um, I have included um, the steps on how to do an audit. Uh, I will go into uh, the detail of each, but first you wanna list all your social media accounts. On a specific platform, you might have multiple accounts. You wanna make sure you consider all of that. You wanna evaluate and audit each profile that you have on social. You want to identify your top performing content and posts according to your goals. What is the, what is more important for your team? And then evaluate each social media to make sure that, that again, you are considering which platform is more helpful, which, which is um, helping you achieve uh, your goals. And then understanding your audience on each of those platforms. So first and foremost, for the first one on the next slide, you want to have a template. This could be as simple as what you see on this screen. This could be a more uh, like there could be more columns and more information you want to capture. This one is a, a simple one that I have here. You can also use one of our blogs on our website that has a, a beautiful template as well as some guidance on how to best audit your social media platforms. But you want to start with, as I mentioned, listing your social accounts. So having a URL for each of those accounts helps you directly go to that, that page and get additional information you want to put on your audit um, table. And then you want to count, you want to have a count of the followers on each of those profiles. You want to know which, uh, which profile is, has more visibility, has more followers on it and how you're doing compared to the past. Are you getting more followers? Uh, which platform, again, is getting more visibility compared to the last time that you did the audit? Then you want to have your average monthly activity. This is typically the number of posts you have shared on each of those profiles, um, average, uh, for e uh, average for each month. Um, so then you can take a look right away and compare your monthly activity uh, against your number of followers. Are you more active on the profiles that has more followers or uh, is more activity leading to gaining more followers? So already with this information, you can get some ideas around how you are performing on each of those social profiles. The next thing that we typically recommend is focusing on your top performing posts. So for each of those profiles, identify the top three posts based on the metrics that is more important for you. This could be engagement, this could be the number of comments uh, each post has received or number of likes each of those posts have received. So based on, again, whatever is important for you on each of those profiles, identify the top three posts. Again, this can go further into more detail, but even with this some like by, with this basic information, you can take a look at your performance on each of those profiles. Number of followers, average number of like posts you have shared for each month, and then which posts are uh, high performing uh, for your uh, accounts. And then as the next step on the next slide, the other thing that is very key and maybe even should have been should have been done as the first step is evaluating your profile. So you definitely have profiles on different platforms, even on some you might have multiple profiles. It's really important to audit your profiles on a regular basis. You want to make sure that your profile is up to date, whether it's the cover image, it's the 
uh, links you include on your profile. You want to make sure that everything is on brand and up to date. Um, maybe from time to time, you want to change your cover photo, your profile picture to make sure that it, it is aligned with your focus. Maybe based on the next upcoming campaign, you want to have a new cover photo that on its own, it can uh, engage people or get more visibility among your followers. Whatever you're including in your bio, you want to make sure that, again, it resonates with your uh, brand tone of voice. You want to make sure that it is up to date, consistent across all the profiles that you have. You want to make sure that your profile name is also consistent. Uh, if you have multiple locations, you want to, and profile for each of those locations, you want to make sure that it is included in the name of your uh, social page just so that it's easier for your uh, audience to find uh, the page. And any link on your profile, whether it's linking to your website, to upcoming campaigns, fundraising events, you wanna make sure that those links are also up to date. So these are the important things you wanna review on your profile, as well as your pinned post. So on each profile, you know that you can pin some of the uh, important posts you wanna give more visibility to. You want to make sure that from time to time you change that those posts to make sure that these are aligned with what you are currently focusing on and also make it more appealing for followers if they are coming back to your pages. So uh, again, a key step is to evaluate your profiles on a regular basis as well. And then as the next step uh, during your audit process on the next slide, you want to look for patterns. So now that you have done your profile audit, you have to you have taken a look at your performance on each of those social profiles. You want to take a look at um, the performance data and see if there's any particular topic, post type, whether it's image post or video post, that are better uh, that are better in terms of engagement performance. So what um, like what is the what are the best posts in terms of engagement? what are resonating more with your audience, you wanna identify those patterns and include them as you are planning for um, the upcoming months for your social media strategy. Taking a look at uh, the um, performance across your social networks, again, making sure that you are reaching your audience on the right platform. And then finally, if you are doing any sort of like um, engaging um, posts, like questions, polls, you wanna make sure that you're getting the right um, engagement and result according to your needs. If not, let's take a look at what's not working. If it is a question, make sure that it is targeting um, the right people on the social network. So for example, if you're posting a question on LinkedIn, because typically it's a professional audience on LinkedIn, you wanna make sure that your, your question and your poll is resonating with the audience on that social platform. So again, key steps uh, in auditing, you wanna audit your profiles and make sure they are, they are up to date and easily uh, find uh, being able to find it on um, social uh, channels. You want to audit your performance on each of those social channels and look for any trends that can help you uh, for the next step, which is planning uh, your social media goals for the next year. So once audit is completed, you want to start. Uh, you want to start planning. So based on the audit results, you might want to revise something, something that is not working for you, you want to change it, anything that's working, you want to continue doing or improve on. So for the planning ahead, uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, you want to list, again, your social media uh, platforms, and ultimately you want to think about each channel that your organization has presence on and is active on. So then plan accordingly. So maybe uh, your focus for Facebook could be to promote an event because people typically, your audience typically comes to Facebook to, uh, to know what's coming next. Whereas for LinkedIn, it could be to, uh, to recruit more volunteers. Instagram could be used for brand awareness and Twitter could be used for customer uh, relationship and support um, matters. So again, listing your social networks and identifying goals for each of those social channels 
is the key step uh, and the first step in order to identify your goals. And then on the next slide, when you are working on, the, on defining your goals uh, for the future, you wanna make sure that uh, you are considering your goals to be smart. So you want them to be specific, uh, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. And we'll see on the next slide how you can achieve this or how you can leverage this uh, framework to make sure that your goals, uh, even though they could be very uh, general, but at the same time, you can analyze them uh, and, uh, and, and make sure that you achieve them in a time frame that you identify. So let's start with an example. So um, which like this goal is uh, typically a common one. So that's why we're gonna start with that, growing uh, your followers on social media. So this is very general. This is very general and high level. How we can make it being smart, based on the smart framework. You want to make it more specific. So you want to make sure that you are targeting the right platform and you are working on growing your followers on the right platform. So we're gonna say we don't want to uh, increase our followers on Facebook. And then you want it to be measurable. So for how much? So let's say I want to. I I want to say that I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna you know, grow my followers on Facebook, and um, by fifteen hundred. You want to make it time bound. How how long are we gonna work on this goal and uh, achieve it? So, growing our Facebook followers by two percent and by the end of the year. So now right now this is very easy to um. Uh, to define, easy to measure, and also it's time bound. The metric that you want to track for this goal is your number of followers. So you know where you stand today, and by the end of the year, you're going to track the same metric and then compare it. The other good example uh, could be um, driving fundraising. So um, again, this is very high level. We want to make it more specific. So let's say I want to increase our uh, um, our effort for five uh, fundraising on Facebook by two percent. So for this one, I can measure the amount of posts that I cre uh, create for this specific fundraising, the number of clicks that came from those posts, and finally at the end, the amount of fund fundraising that we were successful to achieve by the activity on Facebook. The last one is the overall brand awareness. So we want to increase it. So let's say again, face, targeting Facebook, 1% increase in our engagement on Facebook could be the goal that we want to set. And the, the metrics that we can track for that is the engagement rate. So the amount of interactions that our posts receive, likes, comments, and reshares. Or we could even take it to the next level by uh, considering the number of clicks on the post or video views um, to uh, determine, the, determine the amount of um, awareness that our activity on Facebook created. So again, these are high level, but you can always use the same format to identify your overall goals and then make them more specific and list the metrics you want to track for each of those goals. All right, so uh, now that we have done the audit, we have planned and set our goals, uh, let's target another strategy that we can consider, which is a social listening strategy. If uh, you are not familiar with what social listening is, on the next slide, I have a definition, a very simple and high level definition of uh, social listening. So this is all about reviewing the mentions of your brand, going out there, looking at competitor brands and see what they're doing, any related keywords, you wanna search for that on social media and be on and stay on top of anything that's happening out there on social. So this is outside, this could be outside your own um, brand channels. This could be anywhere on social media, on your competitor pages, on other platforms. You wanna see what's being said about your brand and also other related keywords uh, in the same industry. So with, ha with having that definition in mind, on the next slide, I have listed some of the use cases for social listening. Um, so here are 
the five that I have identified, obviously the use case could be um, uh, more than this. It's not limited to this five, but these are the top use cases, especially for the nonprofit organizations. So first one is understanding your audience. So who, so who your audiences are that you typically interact with. Market intelligence, so again, who are the top influencers? What are the stuff saying? Uh, related and uh, being said on social related to the keywords that are relevant to your organization. Crisis management. So anything that's happening um, in the industry related to your brand that you want to stay on top of. And customer engagement. So what are your audience again saying about you? Um, what are the, um, um, the posts that they are engaging with more often? And then finally, your competitors uh, and any industry trend that you want to be aware of. So we're going to go into the detail of each of these uh, five use cases on the next slides. So the first one being understanding your audience. So you want to know what your audience are saying about your brand, whether they're loving it, whether they are identifying some gaps that you can jump in and help with. You want to be aware of everything that's happening and not everything is said and is um, basically not all their activities are happening on your own pages. So you want to make sure that any mentions of your brand, uh, you're considering those as well and you are going through those so you're not missing out on anything. Some of the good practices for this one is, again, understanding your audience, finding your popular posts and um, mentions of your brand. So you review them. Again, understanding what your audience is saying about you is gonna help you a lot with your uh, future strategies. And then checking out your demographics. So who are the audience that are typically talking about your brand? Are you targeting them when you are creating posts on your own brand pages? So these are the stuff that you can learn uh, by having a social listening strategy in place. Next use case was market research. So I'm monitoring the conversations that are happening in the industry, what's working, what's not working, what is popular in the market. So you might want to consider that as you are planning for your content or even your future events. And uh, this information is really helpful to your marketing team, to your customer service team. This is really important for them to stay ahead of uh, everything that's being set out uh, in the market. And you might want to tweak your services based on the information that you get uh, from uh, the market research you can do by having a social listening strategy in place. So reviewing the common questions on social, that's going to help your team to address those questions on your social profiles, on the posts you are creating, and make sure that there are no unanswered questions um, uh, from your brand perspective, and then identifying popular platforms. Because if you know where your audience is, it's gonna be easier for you to uh, reach out to that audience. You know where, if your audience is typically, let's say on Facebook, you wanna make sure that you align your strategy to have a stronger presence on Facebook. So these are all the intel that you can get uh, from market research. The next use case is crisis management and brand protection. So social listening allows you to track sentiments in real time. So you can uh, know what's being said about your brand and if there's any significant change in how people are talking about your brand, the services they're receiving, uh, you wanna make sure that you stay ahead of the game. You are on top of it. You can address anything that's gonna have an impact on your brand. Uh, you want to make sure that you are uh, ready to act on it as quickly as possible. So you want to make sure that you are tracking your mentions, you are tracking the sentiment of your audience, uh, and if there is any huge shift in there, you can act quickly. So for this one, you can track the mentions, as I mentioned, and have, uh, you know, the, you can set a normal rate for your mentions, and then if that norm is changing, you know that there is something going on and you need to act on it. So you can set alerts for that to be notified if the number of mentions, if there's a spike there, uh, and then you can act accordingly. 
having a crisis uh, management plan in place is obviously helpful. You want to make sure that your team is prepared for any changes uh, that's happening around your brand on social. And then, uh, la um, not last one, the, the, the one next uh, after that is customer engagement. So on the next slide, and uh, that's another use case for social listening. Um, people are engaging with your posts or mentioning your brands. You want to make sure that you engage with them in the right place, not just for jumping on it and selling them, but also for interacting with them, for creating that relationship with your audience. So it really, uh, it is really important to make sure that you are engaging with the right audience. And also you are giving them, um, uh, you are making that relationship with them for not just selling them your services, but also, again, talking about your brand and also answering any questions they might have that you can help with. So creating that relationship is really important. You want to make sure that your team is, um, is set to help answer any comments or questions that your audience have. You might want to set a list of preset answers that your team can share with the audience on social just to create that efficiency when it comes to customer engagement. And then finally, the last use case, which is around competitor and industry trends. So social listening is more than just understanding what's being said about your brand, but also what are what your competitors are doing can help you um, shift your strategy if needed. So if there's any gap uh, that you can identify by listening to your competitor's audience, you might want to address that and use that to your advantage. So social listening can show you what your competitors are doing in real time. Again, for you not to miss out anything when it comes to uh, setting a strategy. So definitely uh, the practice there would be to checking on your competitors on social media on a regular basis and see what's happening around their brands on social. All right, so that was the five top use cases for social listening. As the next um, topic, as I mentioned earlier during the agenda, uh, we have identified two practices that we wanted to share with you based on listening to organizations like yours. We identified creating a content calendar and setting up um, tracking could be beneficiary for your team. Um, during today's uh, webinar, I have referred to having a plan in place and also tracking your performance on social to understand what's working for your team. So these two practices can help you achieve those. The first one being the content planning. So when we think about building uh, our content on, on social, we always find it helpful to have a master plan in place. So this could be the list of the uh, relevant events, uh, dates, any uh, upcoming holidays that you want to be prepared for and have a content in place for. So having that master plan help you achieve uh, that um, efficiency you're looking for when it comes to um, when, when it comes to managing your social platforms. So things to consider are local events. So you wanna be, uh, you wanna mention those or have them on your content calendar, any topical um, activity you wanna do on your platforms, whether it's around campaigns you're launching, any resources you wanna share with your audience. And then finally, relevant trends and holidays that you wanna post about. So having these basics in mind, on the next slide, I have a sample calendar. Uh, this is very simple and with just like some high level events and holidays, you can definitely take it to next level and adding some more uh, details that you typically post about. Having a calendar like this in place is helpful because you can plan ahead of time. You, you know what's coming next month and the month following that, so you can plan for them. And you can have also um, again, campaigns you're running throughout the year so you can adjust the timeline if it is like having conflict with some other events going on. Having a calendar um, helps you have that bird eye view around like what's happening in the next few months and plan accordingly. And also if there are any trends uh, or if there are anything happening in the industry that you wanna act quickly accordingly, 
having this uh, calendar view can help you with that because you have already got some of the stuff out of your way by planning ahead of time. So you have more resources and time available to focus on those trends and um, again, act accordingly to what's happening in the industry. So again, this is a simplified calendar. Some of you might be using like tools like Hootsuite for that. If you are using Hootsuite, you know that there is a calendar view uh, within the platform that you can have everything in place and schedule posts ahead of time for any upcoming campaign, event, or holiday that's happening in the future. And then the next thing we wanted to review in terms of practices was implementing tracking for your social media posts. Again, um, in the previous slides, I talked about measuring the impact of your posts, whether it is driving traffic to your website, to the fundraising event. So all of this is achievable by having a tracking um, system in place. So when you are creating a post to, uh, to publish on social, and you are trying to drive traffic either to your website, to register for an event, to participate in a fundraising webinars, all sorts of like uh, registration um, pages that you have on your website, um, how to track that and how to make sure that the traffic is coming from social or even narrow it down to which social profile specifically, you need to have a tracking uh, system in place. I have a suggestion on the next slide. You, if you are using Google Analytics as your um, um, as your website um, system, you can set up UTM parameters. So you can see on the bottom left corner that you have your website.com. This is the URL for your web page. If you start using uh, um, UTM uh, parameters to track uh, the traffic that is being driven to your website. You can narrow it down to see from which social platform it is coming, from what event, or even narrow it down to what sort of comment, uh, content drove that traffic. So it is really helpful. This is the sample that I got from Google Campaign Builder. This is available to everybody to use. So basically, you have your URL. What else do you want to track? Is it the social platform? Is it the uh, post specifically campaign? So you can add all those identifiers um, known as UTMs so that when your website receive a, um, a click or somebody comes to your website, you would know from which post, from which platform and which campaign activity drove that traffic. These are all the information that can help you identify your top performing posts so that you can leverage as you are planning for a upcoming campaign or again, uh, as you are putting a content strategy in place, you know what's working better uh, based on your previous activity and you can leverage that knowledge uh, to uh, continue being successful with your social media activity. So if you wanna learn more from this, uh, I have included the link to Google Campaign Builder. Feel free to leverage that information. Uh, on a Hootsi blog, we also have a blog on how to leverage UTMs. Uh, when you are creating content for social. So these two were the two practices I wanted to share uh, for today. And then uh, I'm gonna wrap it up with just going over some key takeaways uh, from this session. So if you go to the next slide and the slide after that actually, so the three key takeaways. First of all, make sure that you audit your social profiles on a regular basis. The information helps you understand what's working and what's not working and you need to change. Second one, set SMART goals. So make sure that your goals are um, attainable, relevant, uh, time-bound, specific, and measurable. So start with practicing of jotting down your goals and then uh, using the SMART framework to make them uh, more specific and then make sure you track them on a regular basis. And then finally, use data to your advantage. Use the, all the all the resources that you have and you can get data from to make sure that you are doing the right thing and uh, then learn from what's working for your um, social activities according to your goals so you continue doing that. And anything that's not working, let's identify why it is not working 
and then make the necessary changes there. I hope this was helpful. So uh, I'm gonna now hand it over to Katrin. I think the next would be the Q&A section. Awesome. Thank you so much, Roya. Uh, I really appreciated uh, that overview. Um, I was also taking notes as you were talking that uh, to apply to our own program. <laughs> um, but now we are going to go ahead and switch over to Q&A. And we do have a few questions uh, popping up um, online. And let me go just go ahead and read them out. Um, first from Steve, as a small nonprofit, mostly using Facebook, there is no obvious way to get the information that you described uh, in the audit. Does that mean that Facebook is not good for us? Sorry, I was just on mute. Um, so uh, to get the information, yeah, I think, I, I'm not sure what you mean by get the information I described. Most of the metrics that I had as an example are available on Facebook. And again, there are tools also helping you uh, audit uh, your performance on different social channels, like at, even at Hootsuite, we do have that information captured for each of those social networks so you can compare. And again, take a look at your performance. Not sure, Laura, if you want to add anything. No, I think that was great. I, I totally agree, right? Using tools like Hootsuite or even just looking natively on Facebook, you can get a lot of that great information and data for your audit, for sure. Great. Thanks. Thank you both. Um, and Steve, if you have follow-up questions on any of that, definitely feel free to pop another question in the Q&A. Um, but moving on to the next question uh, from Stephanie. What are your thoughts on threads, particularly in terms of establishing goals, smart framework, and the metrics that you would use to track? Yeah, I think everybody is kind of new to threads. Even for us, as we were talking to our customers, we're, we're asking them to have presence on, on threads, but it's a new platform. So we are also learning from, uh, from it as well. Unfortunately, there are not much uh, available currently for analytics when it comes to threads. I'm pretty sure that's going to be coming. Um, but for now, what we recommend to our customers is have a presence there because also like that's a new way of reaching out to your audience. But again, in terms of metrics, I think we have to wait a little bit to see where it's going with analytics. Makes sense. Thank you. Um, next question um, from Valerie. For setting goals, what number should a small nonprofit expect to achieve? Um, I'll let Laura explain this, but I don't think you can set a specific, we can recommend a specific number. I'm pretty sure there are industry benchmarking information available that we can use. Yeah, I would definitely agree. So it's going to look different for everyone, right? Just because everyone's got a different social presence and different audience. Um, and I will say as well, everyone starts from zero, right? So a lot of the times, you know, you're continually trying to grow your audience and grow, you know, your mission and all the great content you're putting out there. So I would say for, you know, maybe a smaller nonprofit, you're working on some of that growth on social, um, just take a look at what your normal looks like today. And that can be a really good benchmark for driving success in the future. So um, like where I mentioned, there's some good benchmarks for engagement rate or, or whatnot that we can send over. I think there's a Hootsuite blog. I'll find it and pop it in the chat for you. But um Really, I would say looking at yourself and comparing yourself to your own performance over time is a really great way to just sort of continue driving success there. But really good question. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, and then moving on to the, the, another question, this time from Mark. How do you get over the hump when getting traction on social media? And when do you need to spend money on promoting posts to get that traction? It's hard to analyze metrics when there is not a lot of activity. I'm going to take a stab at it and then hand it over to Laura. I think that audit practice that I explained earlier could be a good uh, way to start understanding what's not working, why the, the traction is not as much as you were looking for. So maybe you targeting another platform could be the right thing to do, or maybe changing the tone of voice 
Uh, so all sorts of like things that you can analyze from the data in terms of like who saw your post but didn't interact with it. What's the reach compared to the engagement you got from it? So maybe people are seeing your post but not interacting with it. Whereas like if it is not creating the reach you're looking for in the first place, then that's when you want to promote it because you want to get it out there. You, you want to go beyond your followers and make it more available to others outside your followers. So that's when promoting and uh, putting some spend behind your post would make sense, as well as like those high performance posts that you always want to promote as well. So great question. And I'll ask Laura to also uh, add her input for this question. Yeah, I think I would agree 100%, right? Even if you have some of those, um, like if you're looking at your metrics and there's not a lot of activity there, you're still going to get some information, right? There might be a post or two, even if it's not the metrics you want to see, um, they're performing better than some of the other ones, right? So use that knowledge to your advantage to say, okay, out of everything, even though there's maybe not a whole lot of engagement here, these kind of topics are getting a lot of engagement for me. Maybe this post template is. Um, and so what can you sort of take from that and use for your content strategy going forward, like Raya mentioned? So um, yeah, even if there's not a lot of activity, it can give you some good information in like a direction to go. Um, but yeah, continually A-B test, right? Maybe like where I mentioned, you try out on a different platform, maybe you try out doing video instead of images. So always be testing as well, because you never know what new format or new idea could really help bring some traction for you. Um, so have fun with social, right? Um, I know there can be a lot of, uh, you know, formulas and trying to play into the algorithms and all of that, but really it's a way to connect with your community and connect with, you know, folks that also align with your mission. So Definitely, you know, try new things, have fun and see what works for you, for sure. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so just to, to circle back to our initial question about Facebooks, um, we do have a follow up question about that one. Um, as a follow up to my Facebook question, we publish a video each day as well as text posts for videos. All we get is the body count, no record of who watched. And a view only says that they were there for five seconds, which seems pretty useless. Do you have any suggestions on how to move forward from there? I would say, first of all, it's not useless data. The fact that people are dropping when watching your video, that's a good information, a good piece of information to have. So you want to make sure that your videos are short. You're getting the message and the message out there in the five seconds, maybe, uh, and also create more engaging videos or maybe ask your team members to start the engagement on the post uh, and see if it can help with the engagement. So people might add more comments as a follow up to your video post. Um, so these are the things that came to my mind right after I heard about like five second dropping, that's useless information. I don't want, I, I want to say that's not useless. That's actually helpful. So maybe there is something that you are dropping after five seconds. And also you can leverage that information to make sure your videos are uh, created according to how your audience are interacting with your posts. Excellent, thank you. Um, a question from Tracy. How does Hootsuite compare with something like Meltwater when it comes to social listening? Um, that's a very detailed question and I can speak to Hootsuite, but I have not used Meltwater. So it's gonna be hard for me to compare the two platforms. Um, not sure what specifically um, you were looking for in terms of the comparison, but obviously within Hootsuite, you can create search queries, basic search queries, based on just like certain keywords, or you can take it to the next level by adding location, other parameters you wanna consider and narrow down your search to make sure that you are just seeing what is relevant and what you're looking for. Thank you. Um, a question from Anand. Uh, what is the recommended budget the percentage to be set aside for any nonprofit sector towards their marketing and advertising? That's a good and very specific question. Not sure, Laura, if you have any 
recommendation for this one? Yeah, yeah, really good question. So I would say it's maybe not as direct of an answer as you might want. Um, but really, you know, everyone's budget is going to look different for paid social. So I think it's more so using the budget that you do have really smartly, right? So like, instead of going in and maybe boosting every post with a little bit of paid ad spend, maybe you go in and you let those posts sit up for a little bit organically. And then you just boost some of the top performing ones, because you can see that they're resonating with your audience already. Maybe you run um, a specific paid campaign um, during, you know, some really, um, you know, peak events that are happening for you or peak times that you really want to promote, you know, your mission to a broader audience. So when you're running a paid campaign specifically that's not boosted, um, it's a great opportunity to also A-B test and optimize your budget, right? So maybe you have um, three different ads within your ad set and you test one thing. So one thing is different about all three of those. Um, maybe you have the same image for all three posts, but you change up the post copy a little bit for each. Maybe you have um, you know, different images, but the same post copy. Let those run for a little bit, usually 24 hours or maybe till it hits a thousand impressions. And then you'll start to see one of those or maybe even two sort of lead the pack um, and you might have some underperformers. So then you can turn those ads off and put the rest of your budget towards the ones that are getting some good results for you. Um, so it's kind of a bit of a, a maybe less direct answer, but it's not really like a percentage of your budget socially let's say, but more so um, how you can optimize and use your budget to make the biggest impact with your social. So, um, you know, it always helps to show on that impact. Maybe that budget can always increase down the road for some paid social, but start with what you have and really sort of um, show the impact that it's making by, you know, boosting those top performing posts for you or A-B testing within those separate ad campaigns. That was fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, moving on, we were, we are getting near the end of the, of the session, so I'm just going to do the next two questions. Um, but if you do have more, please don't hesitate to toss them in Q&A or even chat, and we can uh, include them in the follow-up materials after this session. Um, so uh, a question from Catherine. What is the average number of hours a week do you foresee a nonprofit would need to dedicate to follow through with your recommended process? I think it all depends on uh, like what you are trying to achieve during the week. Like if you're running a campaign, obviously you need more time um, being spent on the planning and creating content for that, whereas some other time could be more quiet. Um, but I would say you would at least need like between three hours, like a little bit more, three to five uh, to for each week to make sure that you are um posting your right content engaging with your audience because that's one of the recommendation in terms of keeping your audience engaged by answering their comments answering their questions make sure that you're not missing anything so i would say three to five but this is not specific to nonprofits. so let laura add in if she has any benchmarking for for this specific um industry yeah, I would totally agree, right? A couple couple hours a week to, to maybe do a little social listening, go through some of those campaigns. Um, the audit, though, once a year, right? You don't need to do that as regularly. Um, and it's just a good gut check. I would say we're coming up on that time, right? Especially with 2024 planning coming in place. Um, so maybe you start sort of working through some of that audit now so that you've got your 2024 plans ready to go. Um, but besides that, I, I would agree, you know, a couple hours a week, but the, the audit might take a little more time. Um, and so for that, you know, you want to give yourself a little more bandwidth, but it's only once a year. Excellent. Thank you both. Um, and just our, our final question for today's session, at least live. And again, definitely don't hesitate to toss questions into the Q&A or chat and we can follow up after. Um, this is from Mark. Um, 
Uh, I've heard that platforms downplay posts that link to external sites. So is it better to interact on each platform for the brand like follow, share, and others rather than posting links, uh, for instance, to external news articles? So I, sorry, I, I thought somebody's talking. Um, so for that one, I would say, I mean, you always want to have links in your post to, on a regular basis because you want to, again, drive people to some sort of out, outside the social media activity you're doing, whether it's your website, it's an event, and so all sorts of things. So I don't think there's a way for us to avoid having links in our posts. But obviously you want to focus on your post being engaging as well, even on the social media. You want it to be uh, some sort of like interactive so they might want to add some comments in there. So you can leverage some of the best practices to keep your post engaging while having the link included in the post. So that that would I would say that's the best possible way to avoid getting into the trap of like your post being downplayed because it does include a link. Um, so that was a great question. I'm actually now curious to know more about that. So I will do my due diligence, but I'm pretty sure there are ways to get over that uh, algorithm if the post does include a link, it is downplayed. But Laura, any other strategies you might have? Yeah, I would just agree, right? Put that value right up in the post itself. Um, you know, even if you're linking out to some resources, put the main key takeaways in the post, right? Um, if someone wants to learn more, they're going to click through and learn more regardless. So it's always nice to give them some of those main value takeaways right in the, the post copy. Um, I've kind of heard that as well, right? I know our, our even our own Hootsuite social team has been playing around with linkless posts um, and they've seen higher engagement anyways on ones that don't have links in it. Um, so I think it also depends on your goal, right? If you're wanting to maybe drive more engagements on your posts on social, maybe experiment, A-B test with a little, um, you know, a couple posts there with no links to see what that does for you. But, you know, it's also important that we drive folks to our website and, and talk about our mission there. So I would say maybe don't go full fledged into only linkless posts, but A-B test and see how they do and maybe add them in your strategy from time to time to drive engagement. Thank you. That's great. Uh, I really appreciate the response on that one in particular. It's a very interesting question. Um, so thank you everybody for joining today. Um, we do need to move to the wrap up um, and we do have a couple of questions that we didn't quite get to, but we will be following up in the uh, follow on after the event today. Um, and thank you also to uh, Roya and Laura for being here today. Fantastic presentation. And again, thank you to everybody who um, entered chat and, and questions. We really appreciate it. Um, some really fantastic questions came up today. Um, and if you can, uh, folks online, if you can maybe add something in the chat about something that you learned today. Um, we'd love to hear some of the points that maybe really resonated with you or that you'll be taking with you after today's session. Um, also, um, if you enjoyed today's session and um, you wanna support similar events like this going forward and maybe reach nonprofits, um, feel free to reach out to our team at TechSoup around um, being engaged or perhaps even sponsoring an event. Um, but I, I know I'm just to go back for a quick second on the chat. Um, I just wanted to share a couple of things that came up. Uh, one, uh, some learn Haley learned a process for approaching social media as a newbie. Excellent. Um, love sharing the UTM tip is another thing that came up. Um, and just a lot of thank you for the, the general knowledge, um, particularly around uh, reinforcement on marketing in general and how to solve. Uh, problems instead of hard selling <laughs> during a session. So thank you for the feedback. We really appreciate your, your input via chat. Um, and again, also, if you're interested um, in perhaps collaborating with TechSoup around an event like this, reach out directly to Susan Tenby on our team, um, who can talk to you about uh, possibilities of being a sponsor or being more involved with these events. So again, thank you so much to everybody uh, for attending today. Um, and don't forget to uh, fill out our post-event survey. The link is in the chat. Um, 
And another quick reminder, we will be sending out the slides and any follow-up information that is associated with today's presentation. So thank you, everybody. And I hope you have a great afternoon. Take care.